It's a story you may have seen play out in your own family. Someone arrives as a migrant only to find their qualifications aren't accepted in Australia, forcing them to take a lower paid job. It's not good for them, but a new report warns it's also a bad outcome for Australia's economy, dragging productivity down and worsening the national skills shortage. Melinda Salento heads the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, known as CEDA, and it's released this report. Melinda, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. This report says $4 billion in wages are being lost by migrant workers doing jobs below their qualifications. How is that happening? Yeah, it's a really great question, isn't it? I mean, we've got a migration system that has long targeted young and skilled migrants because of what they can bring to our economy. And what our report found is that we're still actually not doing a really good job of matching the skills that they bring to the roles that they're doing. It's bad for them. It's bad for the economy. And the $4 billion figure, uh, we calculate based on the wage gap. So we find that recent migrants to Australia uh, earn about 10% less uh, than similarly skilled uh, Australian-born workers uh, because they're not in jobs that are utilising their skills. And that's a productivity for lost productivity. So give me an example of the kind of worker that might come in, what their skill is, what's not recognised and what they end up doing. It's across the board. Um, we see it uh, a lot for the more highly skilled migrants. So while we identified a 10% wage gap um, for uh, across all recently arrived migrants, actually the wage gap was larger for the more highly skilled migrants. They're people coming in to do technical jobs, uh, to work in professional services, to work in engineering uh, across the board. So uh, it's an issue that we have to really tackle. We think there's three factors contributing to it. Uh, English language, uh, English, Eng my, my English language. <laughs> Perfect English, timing. <laughs> English language um, uh, ability, uh, our ability to recognise the skills that they bring, uh, as well as an element of discrimination. You found migrants in Australia who've been here between two and six years are earning 10% uh, less than Australian-born workers, but some groups are doing worse than others. Which cohort is seeing the biggest gap? Yeah, as I said, one of the things that we found was that those uh, workers uh, who are coming, skilled migrants who are coming in with higher qualifications are actually experiencing the biggest uh, pay gap. We also found that uh, migrants coming in who are educated in fields that require licensing have a really significant pay gap. So uh, if they're not working in a field that, um, that they were trained for. So we think this issue about skills recognition is a really important one. Okay. And in that question, I'm, I'm also interested in places across the world where people come from. Is it happening in, in some places worse than others? Uh, what we're finding is people who come from non-English speaking backgrounds um, are the ones um, who are really struggling. And that's one of the reasons why um, when we identified the gap, we're looking at English language ability. Uh, it's one of the reasons why we think uh, one of the things you need to do is to actually improve English language training uh, for people once they are in uh, Australia. Boosting productivity is one of the most important ways to increase the standard of living in Australia. And we talk a lot about productivity, I think often meaninglessly, can I say, and we need to define what we're actually talking about. You say it's holding back productivity. Explain what that actually means. Yeah, what we mean is that if you've got someone who, who's coming in with um, skills, education and training and they're coming to Australia looking to utilise those skills, um, if they get here and they can't uh, use those skills in a, in a job that they would like to, to um, be employed in because their language skills aren't quite there, uh, because their skills aren't recognised or because um, they're being discriminated against... Uh, by employers, then they're not going to be able to uh, be as productive in the workplace. That means they can't put their skills to use, uh, they can't add the value that they want uh, to add, and that the employers aren't getting uh, the most value out of, uh, out of that skilled migrant. That's really what productivity boils down to. Not getting really the, the maximum um, outcome out of a particular worker. Uh, absolutely. And, you know, for the worker, of course, they're not getting the wages that they could earn. Um, for the economy as well, we're not getting the tax revenue that we might earn. Mm. You've suggested some solutions here, and solutions are important. One of them is to recognise a migrant's abilities, not just on paper. Explain what do you mean. Yeah, um, this is an issue that we have actually within Australia as well, um, that we want to uh, recognise um, qualifications you know, rather than competency. Um, that can be really... So it's like saying... Um, we're going to recognise how you 
how you learn to do this thing, not whether you can do this thing. Um, and so what we're saying is that, one, you should improve the, the timeliness and, and speediness of competency uh, and skills recognition, but, two, focus more on, on whether the person can actually do what you need them to do. Uh, we're seeing other countries do this, Canada and the UK. In the UK, they're doing it for nursing, uh, and researchers are showing that that's allowing them to attract uh, nurses uh, faster than other countries. Big challenge for Australia. So the UK is currently successfully bringing in more nurses? Well, they're, they're looking at how they can improve uh, the recognition of competency and skills uh, in a way that allows them to get nurses in faster. You also mentioned discrimination, and that's, that's a sort of wicked problem. How do, you, how do you address that? I think one of the things that we call out in the report is that, firstly, uh, you know, it, it, people have a really strong preference for what they call sort of local skills and experience, and you hear this all the time. Uh, you actually hear it from expats coming back to Australia. Now, that can be um, real, uh, and maybe local skills and networks are important, in which case address that. But if that is a proxy for concerns about the, the ability to speak um, English well or whether you speak English with an accent, it's harder for other people to understand, or whether you're just simply discriminating based on your own um, bias, that's not good for the uh, skilled migrant. It's not actually good for your um, organisation either. So if networks and local experience are important, address those. We've seen Engineers Australia have mentoring programs, for example, and there are government programs that work. If it's a proxy for um, English language, uh, then tackle English language and let's get the right training for skilled migrants in English language so that they can lift their skills, including professional language uh, ability. But if it's discrimination, then we've got to tackle that head on. Um, I think it's about sort of um, identifying that having a more diver diverse workforce is good. It enhances productivity and we've seen plenty of results uh, to that effect. Uh, and I think it's about recognising, as we call out in the report, um, that not everyone of the same ethnic background or racial background is the same and that we actually have to just identify um, people's ability and treat them as an individual and come at it that way. What does this mean for Australia's overall migration program, including the number of migrants arriving every year? Yeah, I think what this focuses on is, you know, as I said at the outset, we've got a program that focuses really heavily on young, skilled migrants. That's a good thing for the economy. Um, what we're talking about here is a way to make sure that the migration system is working really well and that's actually delivering the biggest benefits for migrants and for us. There are a range of other things that need to be improved in the migration system. The government's announced its strategy We've been involved in, in trying to influence that and I think it's actually the government's going about it in a really positive uh, and constructive way. There's more work to be done. Um, there is work to be done, for instance, on the points test um, and obviously English language testing um, mm. and ability is one thing that, um, that could and should factor into that. So I think there's, there's more to be done. In terms of the number, there's a lot of focus at the moment on what has been um, a significant increase a big chunk of that relates to what's happened through COVID uh, and as a catch-up to that. I think the important thing there is not to overreact to that, um, uh, to make sure that we're putting in place a long-term strategy that meets the interests of Australia uh, but also um, provides the opportunities for the migrants uh, that we need um, across a, a whole range of sectors. And, you know, we've been very vocal about the aged care workforce and the importance of having a stream which... Um, that supports the long-term needs of that sector, uh, but in a way which provides certainty and a pipeline of talent. Mm -hmm. Melinda, thank you. Thank you very much. Melinda Salento.